Hi everyone, it's Chris from Red Bloom Yoga and it is Wednesday morning, so I am back to do some more breathing with you all. Um, today I thought we would talk a little bit about our sankalpas and if our intentions, how our intentions are going, and then do a little bit of skull shining breath, Kapalabhati. It's very similar to our breath that we did last week, Bellows breath. Um, I would love to hear how it's going with your breathing. Um, this is something new we're trying. I'm still trying to find the right place to do this. I'm trying to find the right way to do this. I don't go live very often. So we'll just keep working at it. Let me know what you think. Let me know how your breath work is going. So let's begin just by coming to a comfortable seated position. I have a um, cushion underneath me. I'm just in my, actually in my bedroom. Um, it's a nice comfortable space. It's cozy and warm. And um, I'm gonna just close, uh, let's close our eyes. Sit nice and tall and breathe through our nose. So as we start to practice pranayama, our breath, um, it's important to kind of tune in to what's happening within us. It guides us into meditation, which we'll do at the end for a few moments. And so let's just sit and close our eyes and breathe. Notice how we are breathing this morning, Wednesday morning, halfway through the week. Let's, let's, let's notice. We talk a lot about breath in our yoga practices, and um, it's important. Prana, pranayama, prana is our life force. Breath, oxygen is our life force. We can't survive without it. And so it's important to tune in and deepen and harness that power and that energy of our pranayama, of our life and energy force. So once we start to notice how it feels to breathe in and out, Start to deepen. Hi, Melinda. Good morning. Separate our jaw and take a moment. You can do this anywhere. It's beautiful. All we need is just a few moments to tune in. And those few moments of tuning in lets us reset. Maybe you're already at work. Maybe you're in the middle of breakfast with kids. Maybe you are on your way to school. Hopefully you're not Facebooking on your way to school. Maybe you're waiting for class to start. Feel the sensation of our inhales and exhales. And notice how almost instantaneously our body settles. Notice the subtle shifts that happen as we sit still and breathe. Just a couple more moments right here. Lovely, gently blink our eyes open. Last week, which was our first session together, breathing, we talked a little about uh, a little about sankalpas, which are our heartfelt truest intentions. It goes deeper than even a, an intention and definitely is different than a resolution. Um, I think probably a lot of you know how I feel about resolutions by now. Um, I don't do resolutions because they set us up for failure. We have resolutions, which are goals, and we either reach our goal, which is fantastic, or we don't reach our goal which is fine as well, but then we stop. And so there's no forward momentum. So basically with intentions, those are more directionality, they're more um, uh, life choices, they're more uh, perceptions and attitudes, directions that we want to move without necessarily an end goal. And sankalpas go even deeper than that. So sankalpas are our heart's truth, our deepest truth, um, and it feels Right. I can't describe it more than that, other than we like to do things, we like to change things, we like to manifest and direct our lives. And sometimes there are deeper underlying principles that are already there, and we just need to bring them to light. And so that is really what a sankalpa is. And with a sankalpa, you work with it for a long period of time. Um, it's not something that we change every time we come to our mat. So. We talked a little bit about it last week. Maybe you have one already that you're using. Maybe you're still refining it. And that's the other part is we can't force it. It has to be there when it's time. Um, we can't make it happen. We can't say, yep, that's the one. I'm going to make it this one. It has to be the one that feels 
so deeply right in our heart that it resonates with our entire being. Um, and we already know that it's truth. And um, with that knowing and with that feeling, then it manifests. The universe hears it and brings it to us. So um, if you have a sankalpa, that's fantastic. We're going to work a little bit more with it today. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about listening and finding our sankalpa as well if you haven't. But today I wanted to start with our pranayama. Last week we did pranayama um, bellows breath, which was a really strong forceful opening breath, clearing, balancing. It was a wonderful breath for the new year. It creates space, it brings us into our bodies and starts to prepare us and give us fire, that agony, that heat to build and drive us into the future. And today we are going to do Kapalabhati, which is skull shining breath. It's very similar, but very different than skull shining breath. So um, it uses a forceful exhale, and a reflexive inhale. And with this breath, our focus is not on the inhale, it is simply on the exhale. This is skull shining breath because it's clarifying, it is eye opening, it is invigorating. This is one of those breaths, if you do it for a few minutes, it's like a pot of coffee. So I thought it would be a good place to go today with our pranayama practice. So um, we can follow up with last week as we opened and built that fire and now we're bringing in um, awareness and intelligence and eye opening experiences. With Kapalabhati, it looks like this. It's, a, it's an exhale from our belly just like as if we're almost sneezing. Um, when I teach this in class, I call it a farmer blow. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but when people, like if you're out in the fields, I detasseled growing up. If you're out in the fields and you don't have a Kleenex and you have runny nose or stuffy nose, you can just kind of go and then let it out. So I call it a farmer's blow. I'm from Iowa. I don't know if that's an Iowa thing or not. But basically it's that concept of forceful exhale. The inhale is a reflex. It's a little bit faster than bellows breath because our inhales and exhales are not even. Our exhale is longer. Um, and there is an inhale between every exhale. So sometimes people think it's just exhale, 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 so we can't anymore. No, it brings equilibrium, a balance to our breath. So it looks a little bit like this. And we'll do that for a little bit of time. So notice how my belly contracts. Again, I said this with bellows breath last week. Don't worry so much about the movement of your belly because sometimes we get stuck in the fact that, oh, my belly has to go in. And so we're using our muscles, our external muscles, instead of our diaphragm. And what I want us to really focus on is the movement of air. So as we exhale, force it out as we exhale. Remember to inhale every time as well so we can continue this pattern for a longer period of time. So let's come to a comfortable seated position. Um, sit up nice and tall, whether you're in a desk chair, whether you're in your car um, in a parking lot, whether you are at work or at home, maybe you're sitting at the kitchen table or on your couch, you can sit anywhere. Just make sure that we're not completely slouched, slouched back. We want to have a nice tall torso so we have room to breathe. A hand can go on our bellies if that helps. And then let's simply close our eyes. <clears throat> Notice where our breath is. We'll take a full cycle, inhale and exhale regularly, and then we'll inhale again to begin. And I'll walk us through that so we can start to breathe together. And your pattern of Kapalabhati may be a little bit different than mine. Your pace may be faster or slower. Go with what feels good to you. So here we go, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling to prepare. And begin.
Big breath in and out. Keep your eyes closed for a moment and notice everything that's swirling around in our bodies. Notice how you feel. And then gently blink our eyes open. So you may need a Kleenex to go wipe everything away. Um, we're going to do that one more time. That was 30 seconds. Um, you can do this for longer. We'll end up doing it for a minute the second time through. And then we'll sit with our um, Senkopa for a few moments. And notice how that starts to build fire. And for me, it feels like my eyes are starting to open. And sometimes I can't even keep my eyes closed. If your eyes pop open, just simply look down at the ground um, and just soften your gaze as much as you can. Also be really aware of your jaw. Go ahead and uh, make sure that your jaw is unclenched, okay? Keep your lips sealed, but it's it's as we build that intensity, it's easy to kind of clench up like this. So keep it nice and soft. All right, sitting nice and tall. Let's do Kapalabhati one more time. Skull shining breath and really feel your awareness start to rise and come to the forefront here as we breathe. So again, it's just an exhale, a forceful exhale. The inhale is reflexive. Remember to always have that balance, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, but really pay attention to that exhale instead of the inhale. All right, sitting nice and tall, close our eyes. Again, we'll do a full cycle and then an inhale to prepare. And we'll do it for a minute this time. Pause if you need to. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling to prepare and begin. Way there, keep going. Ten more seconds. Inhale, exhale, sit with our eyes closed and just breathe for a moment. Notice the physical and energetic shifts that are happening with this simple breath that we've just done for literally a minute and a half. Pranayama is so important. And then gently blink our eyes open. Lovely. Let's take just a moment to sit as we finish our session together. I want us to think about our sankalpa. So we'll sit in meditation for a minute or so. And if you have a sankalpa, wonderful. I encourage you to repeat it three times silently to yourself or maybe even say it out loud if you're in a place that you can do that. And then just let it resonate within your body. Settle in. When we sit in meditation, there is um, no need to have an empty mind. There is no need to think about anything specific. It really is more about letting us sink down into our awareness, into our being, and let whatever needs to arise, arise without attachment. You'll have thoughts come through your head and they will float through. Sometimes we'll try and attach to it. That monkey mind, as I call it, will pop up and start to talk to you. Just let it float on through. That is the true practice of meditation, of just being present, becoming a witness, becoming an observer within ourselves. 
So again, settle in, find a comfortable space. And if you'd like, I tend to take Dhyana Mudra, which is a mudra of meditation. So our right hand is on top of our left hand and our thumbs connect, making a little bowl. And I always think of this as a bowl that holds my sankalpa, a bowl that holds my intentions here um, as I meditate, keeps my myself together. Close our eyes, find our breath. And ask yourself, if you, if you don't have a sankalpa, ask yourself, what is my deepest desire? What is my heartfelt intention? And maybe something arises. Maybe it's something that's surprising. Maybe it's unexpected. If you have a sankalpa or maybe something is arising, repeat it to yourself three times. Let's remain in stillness for just another minute. Remembering to be a witness, remembering to observe without attachment. We really learn a lot about ourselves when we separate from our thoughts and our emotions. We can see our reactions and how we're driven. Become a witness to our experiences. Take a deep breath in. Open our mouth and sigh it out. Bring our palms to press together on Jale Mudra over our heart. We'll lift our heart to meet our hands, slightly bow our head, bowing into ourselves. It has been a pleasure to breathe with you all today. I will be here again next week. May your truest intentions guide your light. May your world and surroundings resonate with your being. And may you be at peace. Namaste.